Good morning and welcome to the Forex Daily Update, brought to you by Pepperstone on Wednesday the 6th of February 2019. I'm Darren Sinden and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. OK, let's kick off with a look at the overnight changes and price moves to be aware of. Um, I want to just flag a couple of key points uh, this morning. First of all, uh, continuing weakness here in the euro against the US dollar. Um, and though we only uh, saw a, a fall of 0.17% yesterday, look at the weekly gain uh, here, or weekly loss rather I should say, uh, of 0.74%. So weakness by stealth really in the euro trading below 114, 113.92.90 shortly before we recorded the video. Um, away from Europe, uh, the focus has certainly been on the Australian dollar overnight, uh, down by a whopping 1.28% uh, in the session uh, and dragging the Kiwi lower by 0.46% uh, against the US dollar as well. Uh, we'll have a look at the reasons behind that uh, momentarily, but that's a very significant move uh, and undoes a lot of the good work that we saw in the Aussie uh, over the previous week. Elsewhere, uh, the dollar was on the front foot against both the Canadian dollar and the Mexican peso, and dollar index for its part trading back above 96 at 96.14 shortly before we recorded the video, up by around 0.08% on the day. But again, um, a sort of stealthy gain in, on the part of the dollar index up by 0.85% over the prior week. Right then, uh, let's take a look at what's on the calendar, events that may move the markets today. Uh, we've already had uh, a speech by uh, Philip Lowe, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia's governor, and as I say, we'll look at that in a bit more detail momentarily. Uh, we also had earlier this morning uh, a speech from President Trump, the uh, delayed State of the Union address, and there was some interesting news from that as well, and again, we'll look at that momentarily. To come at 0700 GMT, we'll have factory orders data out of Germany for the month of December. You'll remember that the November data showed a sharp decline uh, in German factory orders and uh, cast doubt on the performance of German industry. It'll be very interesting to see uh, what happens uh, in this particular release. At 13.30 we jump over the Atlantic uh, for US trade balance data for November, non-farm productivity for Q4 and unit labour costs in Q4. And then five minutes after that, 13.35, we're back over the border in Canada for Bank of Canada's Governor Lane uh, speaking there. At 1500, we'll also have some further data out of Canada in the shape of the Ivy Purchasing Managers Index data for January. And then we pause, quite a decent pause, this all the way through to 2145. Tonight we cross over the Pacific to New Zealand for employment data for Q4, including the unemployment rate and labour cost index data. 2305, uh, we're back in the US and we have the last of the day central bank speeches, this from uh, the Fed member Quarez. 23.30 sees the release of Australia's AIG Performance of Construction Index for January and at 23.50 we get uh, foreign investment in Japanese stocks for the week of February the 1st to round off proceedings. Okay then, breaking news and comment, this caught my eye overnight and first of all, uh, RBA Governor Philip Lowe has said in a speech that a rate cut is just as likely as a rate rise in the current climate and that the central bank was alert to but not alarmed by the economy and that's really walking back from uh, the message that uh, the markets took away from uh, the interest rate decision by the RBA earlier in the week. Um, it, Governor Loeb effectively said that it was you say, just as likely a 50-50 chance um, that, that they could cut rates as, as, as well as raise them, um, but the market's taken that to be uh, quite, quite a negative thing, at least in the short term. Meanwhile, President Trump uh, announced a second summit with North Korea uh, and its leader Kim Jong-un uh, in his State of the Union address. Uh, the meeting is to be held on the 27th and 28th of February uh, in Vietnam. UK PM Theresa May will spend a second day in Belfast for talks on her Brexit plan and the controversial Irish border issue. Whether she can make any headway remains to be seen, but she's at least trying to do so. OK then, food for thought, something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond, and why not think about this? Uh, industrial demand for gold was at its highest level for four years in 2018, uh, new data reveals. Uh, Q4 2018, however, saw a sharp decline in demand, uh, down by some 5% year over year, and that was the first quarterly uh, decline in gold demand for industry since uh, Q3 2016. Uh, the mobile phone and memory chip sectors were to blame, and they slowed uh, significantly there, said the World Gold Council. Um, here's a, a table just highlighting uh, the trends in gold demand, um, other industrial electronics and technology up a year over year. A sharp drop-off in uh, 
demand for dentistry not sure why that should be but uh, there we go very interesting to see some of the other outlying effects on gold demand okay risk warning time please do take a moment to read this risk warning trading cfds and foreign exchange and margin can be a risky business if you're in any doubt about those risks or the suitability of leveraged products for you then please do contact your pepperstone account representative and do take the time please to read this risk warning thoroughly thank you for your time today <laughs>